The story of Nathan Hale's short life and tragic death is well known to most people. As a young man full of excitement for the American revolutionary cause, he volunteered to spy against the British. General Washington desperately needed information about British troop movements, and Nathan was one of those who agreed to engage in a very risky business. Unfortunately, he was soon caught and hanged by the British. Monuments and memorials of all types have been erected to his memory often quoting his famous last words. Most of these memorials have been respectful and proper, and perhaps some have not. What is not generally known about the house that bears his name is that Nathan never lived in it. As a young man, he lived on the same property, in a smaller house that stood right about here. In 1776, when Nathan's father, Deacon Richard Hale, learned of Nathan's death, he tore down the original house and had one built, which still stands today. At one time, the house was home to Deacon Richard, his wife Elizabeth, the remaining brothers and sisters of Nathan, and 19 grandchildren. Another thing that most people don't know about the Nathan Hale homestead is that it is reportedly very haunted. Over the years, many people, including the staff who care for the homestead, has said that they have seen the ghost of Deacon Richard Hale, Nathan's father, among others. Because of these reports, Connecticut Landmarks asked Ghosts of New England Research Society to investigate. Well, when I, one big experience I had here when I heard that the doors open and shut uh, was over this past summer, actually. I was sitting by myself when the door the staff uses to come in and out, which is a big, heavy door with an iron, old-fashioned clasp. I distinctly heard it open and shut. Um, I was sitting in the gift shop and I looked up to expect and see our director Bev or someone who worked in the homestead come in and nobody came through. While setting up cameras, one investigator noticed what appeared to be movement all around her, but it was happening so quickly she couldn't focus her eyes on it. So as I was walking through taking my preliminary pictures, I walked into a room and noticed there were a lot of shadowy movements happening around me. There were things kind of flitting around me, but they were really moving too fast for me to focus on them. I continued to snap pictures and I captured the image in front of the hutch. Later during evidence analysis, we would determine that the ball of light shown here had traveled approximately two feet within the exposure time of the camera. If that is the case, then it would have been traveling at about 1,200 miles per hour. Another investigator actually saw this ball of light go corkscrewing across the top of this dresser before snapping a picture. It was later discovered that five of these balls of light had been captured on camera. The investigators tried to make contact with the ghost of a servant girl who has been seen many times in the attic. After they left, the camera recorded this strange voice. Meanwhile, in the English barn, Kurt Knapp and Tom Hummel saw what appeared to be a black shadow figure rise up behind Micah Hearn and shoot off to his right, as indicated by this red arrow. Even though Mike had been standing still when the shadow figure was seen, they still tried to recreate it using the LCD screen from the camera as illumination. They were unsuccessful. Did you get that on camera? No, I was facing that the... door just opened. Did it? There have been a few different uh, ghosts supposedly reported here. Uh, the Hales did at one time have a servant girl on the books named Lydia. Um, and there are some stories where her ghost has been seen in the attic or upstairs, uh, wandering around. Even in the kitchen, there's been some. Um, interesting reports of things happening. Um, but my favorite story, and one that was told to me when I first got hired here, was of a small boy who was with his mother and family on a tour of the house. And uh, it might have been uninteresting for kids. And, and this, this boy was running around, he was leaving the group, running off, not paying attention, just, I suppose, boys being boys. But the next thing he knew, we knew, um, he was at his mother's side, wasn't leaving his mom. And, his behavior had changed so much that people commented on it. And he said, the man yelled at me. And everyone said, what are you, what are you talking about? What man yelled at you? He said, I was in the other room and the man yelled at me. 
when the tour was leaving, coming back through actually this room, Richard's parlor, and here we have the picture of Richard Hale, uh, the man who built this house, Nathan's father. The boy pointed at it and said, that's the man that yelled at me. Garner's investigator Kelly Gilbert accompanied psychics Karen Hollis and Donna Rack as they walked through the house to see if they could pick up on any psychic impressions. The night of the investigation, Donna Rack and I were the mediums that were present, and our impressions of the Nathan Hale homestead were that there were perhaps three different energies here on the property, one of which was George Seymour. Don and I both picked up his horse and also his beloved dog. I do believe that George Seymour still watches over this property, he being quite the fan of Nathan Hale. Also, I picked up Nathan's father. I felt that in the upstairs rooms of this particular home, that the energy which he put into the home, taking care of the women and the children here, was particularly strong. Donna felt that Lydia was perhaps here on the property, and I do agree with her on that. So one thing is for sure, the Nathan Hill home said is experiencing paranormal activity, and I do believe that we do have a haunting. The team returned to Joanna's room, armed with a K2 meter, an instrument used to detect electromagnetic fields, something that ghosts are thought to give off. Can you tell me about the member of the Hale family that lived in Beverly, Massachusetts? Mm. Where are you from, that family? Oh. Mm. Did you see that? No. Something caught my eye. Something walked by the, the, the camera, and then there was uh, sounded like footsteps that were, you know, not too far behind. Footsteps were also heard coming from this room. Uh, when uh, we were going over to monitor, Matt, and myself, were uh, just watching to see if we can catch anything. Uh, my earphones on, and I was panning through all the all the DVRs, and I heard this walk, like there was a lot of walking in this back, this back room here. So uh, we came to investigate it. Uh, we didn't see anything. Um, but we did hear footsteps all through the night in this one room. Sometimes in paranormal investigation, it's not one specific incident that leads you to believe a house is haunted. It's more of a collection of small incidents. If we take into account the self-luminescent balls of light, the voice captured in the attic, the footsteps, which are constantly heard throughout the house when no one is there, the doors that open and close by themselves, and the numerous reports of both the ghosts of Deacon Richard Hale and Lydia the servant girl. We believe it's safe to say that Nathan Hale Homestead is... <laughs>